Welcome to a new episode of Rooftop Conversations with May. I have like probably one of the most memorable people I went to college with. And this guy is not just an awesome scientist, but he could probably kick your like, he could probably like hold it down. Like he could probably, he's a great bodyguard. Like he, he would be, he would make like, an amazing bodyguard. Like don't mess with him. And I'm handsome I want you to meet <laughs> I want everyone to be my dear friend from college, Simon Lee. So, Simon, can you please introduce yourself to guys? Me? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm Simon, and I was uh, May's friend in um, in NYU when we were both undergrads, and now we're successful adults. <laughs> well, I mean, you're successful. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Simon has been to NYU for his bachelor's and then also went to, um, can I see this wall? Like, he went to for your master's? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, he, so yeah, Simon course. went to NYU for his um, bachelor's for, in biomedical science and went to John Hopkins for his master's and does bioinformatics. So he's a genius and he's super amazing, does great things. So Simon, this is a question I'm going to, I ask all my guests and I'm super interested to hear what you have to say because we got stories and so I want to know what was your first, how did we meet and what was your first impression of me? <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the PG version, well, I mean, the only version really uh, is like, Wait, so the PG version. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um so yeah i was like anxious in a, in a new environment and so like i was kind of worried that like going to a new college would like be like really daunting and there'd be a lot of like posh and smug students but then i like hear may like screening you know and i'm just like oh wow and she's my major <laughs> yeah like that <laughs> you know what's funny so i interviewed someone else from Polly who said the same exact thing she was like yeah i heard may before i saw may so it's like so funny that like everyone from college is like yeah she's too loud but then everyone in law school was like she kind of kept to herself so it's like the funniest thing when i interview like people from both sides of my life uh, that's um I can't. <laughs> I love. I miss college. I definitely like love everyone like that I went to school with, and like I really miss everybody that like. I mean, I still talk to you know one person from college, but mm -hmm. we all know who that is. <laughs> but um, but anyway, Simon. So like, tell us about like how. So why did you start in biomolecular science? Why that field, and what made you so interested in it? Oh wait, but I didn't tell you about my first impression of you, though. Oh yeah, okay, Not wait, wait. So tell me about your first impression. I okay, I thought you said I thought I thought I was loud. Okay, okay. So tell me what's your first impression. All right, all right. so really, you like so I I heard you, but <laughs> later on I got to know you after you were dancing. Um, oh god! And when you danced. You broke your knee. <laughs> I knew it. Someone was going to say the story. So it had to come out. I, I love this it. story. Wait, okay. So tell the story because I feel like this is this is the story. Like, I feel like this is... Okay, so I didn't know this is possible, but you can actually break your knee from twerking. And so I think I think May was just like winding it down, and I was just like, like, oh, okay, okay, she's really getting it on. And then the next day, I see her coming with crutches. I'm like, oh my god, what happened? She's like, I embarrassed myself. The ambulance came, and and, and I broke my knee. <laughs> and then on like her first or second day of not even uh, in the start of the school year during orientation, you like you like made this huge impression, and um, everyone just kind of. Hello. Hello. No, Simon, you're cut off. <laughs> you were like a story. Okay, wait. I think the signal went out for like two seconds. Huh? Hello. Okay, the oh, signal no, went out no. for like two yeah, seconds. Yeah, I, I was done. Pretty much, I was just laughing at at, at the situation. <laughs> no, but yeah. So basically, for like the viewers. I made the biggest impression when I went to college during orientation week. We were doing the cha cha slide, and of course, there's like that phrase, like like how low can you go? So, you know, gravity wasn't on my side that day. <laughs> but update, my knees are actually more stronger than ever now as I'm entering my twenties. So, you know, I think I'm in better shape. <laughs> But of course, so thank you. So I think I was like, someone's gonna have to tell the story. Like I know it's gonna come out from someone I interview at Polly, and like it's of course. Oh, I can't forget it. I have to tell as it's, many. People you as have no. Yeah. You have to tell people. Like this is. It's like I feel like this is the main story. Like that. I feel like 
you can't tell a story about me without putting that story in. So it's like definitely quintessential. Okay. And I so have now a lot of stories you. about you. That was like a weird one. <laughs> oh, yeah, tons of stories about me. <laughs> that that's for a different podcast that we can't talk about right now. <laughs> oh my god. Actually what's so funny, like so Simon knows I'm a little I'll I'll tell this one. Simon knows I think everyone knows I'm a little wild. I you know I, I get out of hand sometimes, especially in college. And there was one time I got drunk at my friend's house and I was like blacked out drunk. So my mom called Simon and was like, I don't know if you remember, my mom called you to ask where I was. She had your number. And she was like, where's they? And meanwhile, I'm in the back of the car, like passed out. And you had a cover for me? I don't remember that at all. I do, I do remember the story where you were drunk and you were throwing out. Uh, throwing that out was the one. Throwing that was the story. Yes. And my mom oh, okay. told you that. Time. But anyway, Wait. Simon's been my been my guy for like ages. He's he backed me up. Uh, my wild days are done, though. I am like, I'm reformed. So I'm not that person anymore. Um, I'm, a, I'm a strong Christian girl now. I don't do exactly, any of that stuff. Exactly. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. <laughs> so, Simon. Now about you, how, so like why BMS, like, okay, BMS, biomarker aside, so why like that, why, why, why that field and like why specifically, like, I know you said you want to be a vet, then you want to do cancer research, or like, if you could tell me about your story into like doing all of that. Okay. Um, yeah. so I actually chose BMS because of a flip coin, like a, a coin flip. Yeah. Very Simon. Like, That's uh, what Simon to do. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, I, I knew I wanted to do something in science, but I wasn't sure what. And there was chemical, biological engineering, and there was biomolecular science. And I was like, I don't know. And then I flipped a coin, and then I landed in BMS. Um, swear to God, true story. True story. Um, and then, I mean, I ended up actually liking it. So I, I guess I, I got lucky. Um, but let's see. So why I decided to do the path I'm at now. Um, yeah, when I first started, I wanted to do something in biology. So I was just trying to like really narrow down like the field of choice. Um, yeah, like my dad used to um, take me out to like the garden or like um, the woods and then we'd like collect bugs. And so I kind of like got an interest in like animals and, and whatnot. And um, I figured maybe I'll try uh, being a vet. But I didn't really like putting animals down because that was like really rough. Um, yeah, it was like really, uh, like really tough. And really, as an intern, like at the animal hospital I used to work at, like all I did was like clean poop. And I'm like, I don't know if I really want to do this. And, and if you're a vet, like, don't get me wrong, like vets, like being a vet is incredible, but it's so much pressure and you have to deal with crazy people all the time. And like, um, you have to <laughs> my brother's a like, vet tech. <laughs> so like, I definitely know, like he tells me all the time, like it's really hard. Well, he was a vet he's tech rough. and he wants to be a vet. He wants to be a vet now. He's actually applying to vet school. So it's like, no, it's not work, work, you, <laughs> you should love what you're doing but for me no, it wasn't like, but I hard. yeah yeah um so eventually i wanted to try like um research science instead because those opportunities were available at nyu um and so um i couldn't get an internship like i i went to like the bms lab um as a work study but really all i did was clean beakers like i really wanted real real experience um, and actually, I um, got lucky. So I don't know if you know, like, Hagai? Hagai? Yeah, yeah, like, dude, he was my boy. I, uh, like, we, we shared classes together, um, and uh, he found out I was boxing at the time, and he wanted to try to get in on that. So, yeah, like, I happened to train him for a little while. Um, and we, tra uh, yeah, like, we worked together, and then I found out, I'm like, oh, yeah, you work at a lab now? He's like, yeah, a position just opened up. Why don't you come through and try it out? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so I assumed it was going to be like a wet lab job because, you know, that's what we've been studying. But eventually, like when I got there, the, the PI is like, no, you are going to do computational biology. And I'm like, oh, man, what a bummer. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I remember, like, I went to I went to a comp sci class. I like snuck in. I snuck in just to see what, what all the hype was about. And like I hated it. it. It just sucked. So, so I I got I you know started you know learning a little more about it, and I was just like, okay, you know what, this is pretty interesting, and um, you you can get a lot out of it. Um, like things that you couldn't do five ten years ago, like it's very easy to do now. Like 
the, the scope of research is just expanded so much from computational biology. So I just thought maybe um, going into that field, it's like the future, you know, it's, uh, it's where it's at. No, definitely. And like, I think like you, you really like did, and it's, it's crazy that you, your career took off from like, not like flipping a coin and now you're you have two degrees you have a bachelor's and a master's and you're only what like 25 that's awesome like double de like two degrees on your plate done and you're now working at as a i'm gonna say like a bio data researcher at like a really well-known new york city hospital so like that's awesome like like i'm so happy like knowing you and like getting to see like how far you come like i'm so proud to be your friend and like it's it's awesome to see like it's awesome to see like a success story that comes from Howie. I mean, clearly I'm the, I'm the BMS, like unsuccessful story. <laughs> like I failed physics with my third semester, but like, I'm so glad to know like you're doing great and like your career is taking off. And like, every time I see you do something, I'm just like, wow, that, that I know that kid, like he's going to do great things. And I'm, no, I'm no, you, like, you do really well yourself no! too. You're like, you're <laughs> <best history. laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good that you lawyer. followed your passion. So, like, it's and yeah. um, oh yeah, that's right. I haven't congratulated you yet for. Uh, no, 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 no. I already know. I already know. You, you, you told me a couple times. So it's, oh, the love's okay. there. The love's there. But um, you mentioned that you do box. Well, you 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 used to box, and you know you were a big like gym guy when I first met you. I mean, there was always like a snack here. Like, there was always meal preps here and there when we were in college. But like, you, gym was like a big part of your life. Fitness was a big part of your life, and you used to box, and now you're doing combat with like. Muay Thai and like you do jujitsu. So like, how did you get into all of that? Like, why why do combat sports as opposed to another type of fitness? And like, what? Tell me about your Muay Thai story. Okay. Um. I mean, I I always liked um like fighting because it, it was just like something really interesting to me. Like my dad used to like give me all these like Bruce Lee movies and whatnot. Um. So I was like, gee, I want to do that. That looks awesome. And um, I I actually started like um doing a lot of weightlifting. Um, and that was really fun and fulfilling because I used to be like a really lanky, like a stick. Like I was, I was, uh, I think, I don't know, like middle school, high school. Like I was just like this very, very skinny person. I, I still kind of am, but like a little, not, not as much. I was a, a feather. And I remember like girls used to just beat me up in middle school because I was just so tiny. <laughs> no, I can't imagine. I'm sorry, I can't imagine a Simon that's like tiny. Like I feel like since I've known you, and you were like this, like big, not big, but like, you were like this tall buff guy. So I'm like, I can't put the two together. It's like, <laughs> yeah, puberty did me good. Uh, For real. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. I was just kind of in my own like little bubble. Like I, I, I just all I did was like you know go to school and then like like practice piano and I was like super dorky. I, I still am dorky, but it was like 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 I had nothing to to help me in case like things ever like got bad. And I think yeah, so I was like weightlifting with a few friends and we all went to play ball at a park one time, right? And like while we were there, um some guys like came into the park and we were like, okay guys, you wanna play? Like that like it'll be fun. And then like some dude like tried to run up and just like hit me and I'm like, whoa. And then luckily like I like Doc got out the way and then um we like got onto the floor. But luckily, like I was really lucky, nothing really happened to me. Um he just kinda like ran off. But he was like going around doing uh, hate crimes after he got out of prison. And then he actually went to my other friend and he just like beat the shit out of him and like he was just like bleeding everywhere and i remember seeing that i was just like so traumatized and i'm like yeah i need to i need to do something for sure so then i started you know um trying boxing and boxing was just awesome like i was like having so much fun like i had a really awesome coach um and a couple of really good friends who i still train with to this day um but the thing is with boxing it's not a complete sport right like you um let's say you, you you're vulnerable to a lot of things like leg kicks takedowns um it's yeah. it's not it's not a complete system and uh, no definitely I yeah, agree. Like, it's just a lot of like friends. six punches and like a lot of like you know swift movements and things like that so it's not yeah, really like exactly. yeah um i mean don't get me wrong it's very useful um but i, I felt like there was more more to learn you know um and i think i was at the gym one time and a few of my friends were like yo simon but you got those kids over there wrestling like ugh, it's so lame right and i assumed it was wrestling it was just like guys like hugging each other and i'm like yeah I could, look at me i'm huge i could take them on easily and um like they just suplexed me uh, for those of you guys who don't know what a suplex is it's when you hold someone and then you you throw them onto your neck like over your over your head uh, backwards 
And I remember they just did it to me like over and over again. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, like, who are you guys? And they were like, we are tri-state champion. And I'm like, oh, shit, you're Russian. And so, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, and they were like very good. And so I started really like taking grappling a little more seriously. Um, I started doing a lot more Muay Thai um, because Muay Thai is a little more like um, complete. You have punches, kicks, elbows, knees. Um, and sure, like, like you don't have, like traditionally you don't have as much footwork. Um, as like boxing, for instance, but you can integrate it uh, somehow. Like when you're doing MMA, for instance, it's kind of like like you're using a bit of Muay Thai. It's a little bit of boxing, but it's not one or the other. Um, uh, yeah, and then right now I'm actually, or at least before the pandemic, of course, uh, I was training at Hensel Gracie Academy, which is the best MMA gym on the East Coast. Just saying. Um, yeah, like the guys there, like they're legendary. You see like world champions all the time. You see like guys who work extremely hard um even professionally or uh if they're just like a blue collar worker who's doing it as a hobby and like learning from them it's it's been like a really really cool experience um and yeah it's definitely helped my life in, in so many ways uh more than yeah. i can ever describe yeah definitely like i so i as you know like i started boxing in january and like i was not ne- i was never fit like i was not assignment like i was like huffing and puffing on stairs and things like that so like I went to the gym, like did basic cardio and stuff. And then I had an accident in the summer. I twisted my, like I sprained my ankle really badly. So I stopped working out from like July to about December. And then like around Christmas time, I felt like, oh, I wasn't like as fit as I used to be. I wasn't like in good physical shape. So I was like, okay, let's just try boxing. It's something I've always wanted to do. Well, I wanted to do Muay Thai because like I'm Thai you know, got to learn the culture, but my ankle was still a problem. So I'm like, let me start boxing. And like, I did it for, well, since January, end of January. So end of January till now. And it's amazing. Like there's like a mental health benefit to it. Like I feel like, like you remember how you used to say, like when you fight, you black out. Sometimes that happens to me in the back. Like I'm just like this. And then I just like, it, like the world just like dissolves around me. And I'm just so focused in on the sport. And I feel like I can appreciate like, I, I feel like I'm not even a real boxer, so I can't even be like, oh, I do real boxing because I just do workout boxing. But for people who really like do it as a sport or like Muay Thai or, or all these combat sports, like there's a deep respect for that. And like, it's super cool what you do. You know what I mean? Like you throw in a lot of your training into the work and it feels like it's like in a way like safe, a safe way to like let everything out in a way, you know what I mean? Like a, a more acceptable way to like punch somebody and things like that. Oh, yeah, and it's, sure. it's cool. <laughs> so, like, what's the biggest lesson you learned from like being like doing combat sports, like whether it's boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu? Like, what are the biggest lessons like you've had you've had in your life, and also like the biggest challenges that you faced? <sighs> Ooh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, for one, like, um, you're always learning all the time. Like, you can you can definitely take away a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, like you should definitely be well-rounded. So that's, that's one thing that's like really important to not just kind of focus on one aspect of, of a sport or, or, some, or uh, another, but you should really uh, try to um, find as many different uh, games as you could see. And when I say games, I mean like different like styles, maybe someone who focuses on more footwork, someone who focuses more on like uh, power, someone who's more, um, uh, let's say a long range fighter versus a short range fighter. And there's just a ton of aspects, even, even in boxing, people kind of um, misinterpret boxing as something where you just kind of brawl it out, where you just like throw punches and then see, see what happens. And um, there is like a lot of like artistry when it comes to boxing, just, just boxing alone. Um, and that's only like using like your hands and, and footwork, but there's a lot that goes into it. You know, there's a lot of like a, um, like footwork, head movement, um, like angles that you can create, um, feints, all these things, which um, for most professional boxers come intuitively. Um, like there's just so, so much to learn. And it's just like fascinating just to see like different aspects of like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling, Judo. Um, and I don't know, I just want to like immerse myself as much as possible. And I think the hardest part for most people is that um, they don't like, they struggle with starting because maybe they're intimidated or maybe uh uh, they feel like, oh, my body's not ready for it. But really, as long as you start, the earlier you start, the better it is for you and you can like reap those benefits. It's kind of like saying like, ooh, I don't know if I'm smart enough for school. No one ever says that. You go to school so you can learn. Likewise, you go to the gym so you can 
uh, try to make yourself a better person physically and mentally. No, th- yeah, I, def- I definitely agree. Like I, like I was the same way where I was like, oh, like I don't know if I'm fit enough to go start boxing. I don't like, I can barely run a block and I'm just like really intimidated. But it was like my, it really took like, like this one random night where I was like, okay, May, you're going to sign up for these trial classes. Just do it. It doesn't hurt. I remember, like, my first class, I was dying. Like, I was literally, like, all sore. I couldn't even breathe. I was like, oh, you know that SpongeBob meme where he's like, <laughs> that was me. And I couldn't move my body for, like, the first, like, two weeks. But then eventually, like, the, I, I got hooked. I really got addicted to it. And then all of a sudden, like, I went, like, every morning, like, I would wake up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning and go to the gym. Like, and I was never, like, a gym rat or, like, a gym person. Like, I never thought exercise is like a fun thing and so I really did boxing and you're right like it's a mental thing it's I think for me like I had a lot of like mental health issues during like especially during law school and boxing really kind of like helped me take care of it like the post like post law school trauma kind of like okay like let's get yourself better and like mentally and it keeps you focused like I realized like I I'm much more focused and ready for the day when I work out I like um and you're right. Like it is like for every combat sport, and I'm only saying boxing. That's the one like I'm the most familiar with. Where like it's like it is like there's like a, there's a rhythm to it. There's an in, like there's an intuition you have to learn. Um, and actually, fun fact. So my my trainer uh, at the gym I go to, she's a dancer. So like it's interesting to see like how those two things intersect because like you need to know rhythm and you need to know like beats and you need to know like how people's bodies move and how to react to like different you know things so yeah no it's like cool like it's really interesting to see like someone who I know who personally does it and like everything so I want to ask about like so your experience in Thailand so you went to Thailand to train and do Muay Thai like like, I forgot what the name is but like one of the most famous gyms in um in Thailand so like how was that experience like well, like, why did you decide to go to Thailand, my home country? So <laughs> why did, and why did you like, how was that experience like for you? I think I've always wanted to go and you were probably one of the people who've encouraged me to do so. Um, yeah, I think I, I talked to you about it. Like, like, what do I need to know? What do I need to do? Like when I get there and um, like, um, yeah, it was just like a, a solo trip for me. Like I've always wanted to do it and it was my first solo trip. So um, I wanted to go to Thailand because that was like the birthplace of Muay Thai. Um, and like me, like I usually plan all my trips around the gym. So Thailand was like the ideal place. And I stayed in um, Phuket uh, on, along this place called Fighters Road where you have a bunch of gyms adjacent to each other. Um, and so there's just like fighters from all over the world, like gyms that like house like amazing people. I bumped into like uh, UFC fighters. I bumped into like really famous like um, Thai fighters, and it was just, it was unbelievable. Like the adventures I had, there were like five times that I could have died, uh, and like all of them were awesome. <laughs> um, so I actually have a list of like things I, I did when I got there, right? So I'll, I'll just like run through. Um, so there's this place called Monkey Hill, right? And like along along this stretch, uh, like you see like stray dogs, and then you get to a uh, a giant area where there's just like ton of monkeys just everywhere, and like, they're super like they're super cute, like they're really tiny, and then they can like steal from you, but it's like like they can like climb on your shoulder and whatnot. Or you're not supposed to feed them, but it's really cool. Um, and to get there, you have to have like a little moped, right? A little scooter. Um, yeah, so like scooters are a big thing there, and I obviously don't know how to ride one. Uh, I don't even have my license at this point. So I get there and I'm like, hey, can I get one of those? It's only like $100 for a week. Hell yeah, I'll do it. And then like the girl, she like pulls it up and I'm like, all right. And then I press the on, the on button and she, I'm like, it's not turning on. And she looks at me, she's like, Brrr. and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they make they make uh, mopeds differently in the US. So she's like, mm-hmm, okay. Bye bye. So I'm like, I'm like, bye bye, bye fuck. And then like, like, <laughs> I mean, eventually got the hang of it, but it was like super scary at first. Um, like you know, going to a new country uh, in a language that I didn't know. Um, and it was, but it was beautiful. Like the food was amazing, and like the the people were like the nicest. Like they were so accommodating. Um, and uh, like even like I got lost for like four hours one time. 
like actually coming back from monkey hill yeah so i was like riding my moped and my phone stopped working like i don't know i i didn't get data so i was like i can't read all these squiggly squiggly letters <laughs> like thai thai is so hard and like <laughs> none of the locals speak english because only like in, in urban areas do they really speak yeah english. yeah bangkok is like bangkok and like but everywhere else is like Thai. It's just strictly yeah. Thai. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, like, like I don't know how, like in, in in Thai, like they always pronounce gym like gym gym, and I'm like, where's yeah, the gym? Where's the gym? <laughs> they're like, they're like everyone was just pointing me to like different gyms, and so I'm like, this isn't it. This isn't it. This isn't it. And so I was like going around for like four hours, and luckily I finally find a place with Wi-Fi right before my phone dies, and I managed to find a route back to my hotel. Um, so that was that was like really cool. Um, so the gym I stayed at was called uh, Ratachai Muay Thai um, by Kunai. He is like like an incredible fighter from the golden era, like hundreds and hundreds of fights. Um, and like I trained with them for uh, a while. And like like I think my first day there was like 90 degrees. And I, we trained for like two hours in the morning and then two hours in the afternoon. And like I almost passed out because I was just so not used to the climate and, and the, the, the training. And it was just, like really strenuous. But I met a lot of really cool people there. Um, and eventually I got used to it, of course. Um, but it was like the the best time of my life for sure. Like if you ever go to Thailand, like go go to one of those gyms. I swear it's a life changing experience. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Wow! Um, like that's like amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely want to go back uh, and like go with a couple friends. Um, but cause you know, last time I went by myself and I was scary, but if I know someone who knows Thai like you, <laughs> then it might be like a little easier. <laughs> no, definitely. Um, we like, we could definitely come trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I Wait. also went to like different temples. Um, and that was like really cool. Um, yeah. and yeah, uh, I, I went to like the PP islands. I don't know. It's like, a yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's another tourist like beach area. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I almost drowned there. That was another thing. <gasps> yeah, oh my god! Like, New Yorkers can't swim because you know Coney Island, Brighton. It's just so dirty. So, First like, of all, I could swim. <laughs> I could swim. You had lessons. I can swim. <laughs> <laughs> <I can> swim. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's. I mean, like, I'm sure you could swim, but I mean, for me, like, all right. So hear, hear me out. Hear me out. So I knew. I can swim. I'm like, I'm not going to go in the water because I cannot swim. Yeah. Um, but then they're like, here, you have some free snorkels and a life vest. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, what's the worst that could happen? So I put it on and I like put on the snorkel and I'm like, I dive in and I'm like looking at the water like, wow, like all these fishes are so pretty. Um, but then like, I'm like, wait a minute, like it's time to go back to the boat. So I'm like, I'm like paddling, like, like, you know, how, how I see on YouTube. Yeah, this, is kind of like, yeah, this is exactly how. So like, it's all, it's all in the arms, really. Oh God. No, it's still legs, like, by the way. And I'm, like, I'm like paddling faster now. Like, like, I'm like, I don't know how, like, how I'm doing it, <laughs> but, but I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. And then I look down and I realize, wait a minute, like, like I'm, I'm actually moving backwards because there's a current. Um, there's a cave behind me, so it was like pulling me in, and I'm like, "Help! What's the Thai word for help?" Joy, oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "No swim! No swim!" <laughs> no swim. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to teach you Thai so before you go next time. I can't. You teach like the basic words, like help. Well, this, I this can't. Even the first one, okay. <laughs> like, this like four foot tall, like Thai dude. He was like, like he was like up to like my my uh my yeah. Stomach. Thai people are, he, like, jumped are in and he like saved me. he like dragged me back and he's like. Dah. I'm a fucking tourist doing it. <laughs> but he said something in Thai. He was like, no, no, no. God. <laughs> and I'm just like getting dragged like, oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Like, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> like, God. How did you say thank you in Thai? I knew in Thai. I forgot now. <laughs> well, you would say thank you. You're a guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my um, God. That's so cool. Damn. I haven't gone back to Thailand since I was like 10. So, like, I don't even know what it's like over there anymore. But... I've been meaning to go. Whenever this pandemic's over, I will definitely check out um, the gyms. I would love to see a fight. Um, oh yeah, probably sure. get more get more in shape first before I go train out there because they will clown me. Like I'm a Thai <laughs> person, and I can't even fight. Like come on. Um, but how's the food down there? Okay, so like you're so you're in Phuket and PT Island, so that's like that's the southern part of Thailand, and that's like that's the area notorious for like the spice level. So like, how was the food? It's, like, actually, so, like, my parents, my, my mom's from, like, the central part of Thailand, so, like, 
outskirts mm-hmm. of Bangkok and their food's like for me not that spicy but down there like they kick up the heat so I don't even know how it is like a non-Thai person to like eat food down there yeah so um <laughs> Oh, I did go to a competition fight, and then afterwards I went to get something to eat. And this is around, um, God, I forgot the, the area. Uh, it was like, it starts with the R, uh, it was a ba- Bangla Stadium, Bangla Stadium. Uh, and I, this, I'm i pretty sure this was, oh, it was in Patong. There we go. Now, Patong is like famous for like being like wild. <laughs> and uh, I had some of the food there, and it was so spicy. And like, it was already so hot. I was like sweating, and I had to keep asking for tissue. To like, to like put down my shirt so that way I can like, like, like clog up all the sweat. I didn't expect it. I was just like ordering some like basic, like, I don't know, fried rice or something. And I was like, this is so good. But, and it was like $2. So I just got a lot of it. <laughs> but I could, I, I took one bite and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I like started like sniffling. Like, uh, I mean, it's still worth it though. The food was the best. The best for sure honestly that's like the thing about thai food like there's i mean i'm biased so i can't be like oh yeah i love thai. obviously i love no, thai the food. Best I'm food gonna, in the world <laughs> i think it's the best food in the world i'm sorry but Easily. um that's so <laughs> but it's like so cool like you got to like see all these really cool fighters you got to train with someone really famous and like has that experience like made you a better fighter when you came back and like training here in the, in the states uh yeah I, I believe so like i um let's see uh i mean there were actually a couple of experiences that were definitely life-changing for me um mm-hmm. like i mean of course training there your stamina gets way better when you go to the states like you i just felt like like another person like i i could like work out for like hours and hours and hours after i came back like uh my stamina was through the roof um oh, but another thing like i think seeing the culture there um like the way the Thais train is different from the way American people train, right? Like yeah. in America, like I think people like they go into the gym and like they think like they're all intimidated. And they're like, oh, come on, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill this, I'm gonna kill it. Um, but when you go to Thailand, like people have like this like playful demeanor, and and mm-hmm. in that way, um, they actually can uh, train uh, for like hours at a time at like a relatively low pace, um, and in doing so, you put in a lot more time, uh, so you kind of end up. Um, improving at a faster rate so for instance if i were to train really hard like for maybe once or twice a week you know like i might like get in like what like two hours maybe right like four uh yeah like one hour each day but if i train like at a relatively low pace and i like have fun with my buddies and um then we just train for like five hours and like we're not sore the next day so then you can train for five hours on monday five hours on on tuesday five hours on wednesday and then by the end of the week you got the uh, 35 hours versus the the two hours that you get like training like really rigorous rigorously so um yeah like i mean that kind of culture was really cool um and yeah like there's also uh what's it called oh yeah <laughs> I was, uh, before i before this podcast continues i want to like <laughs> like there's this really awesome story so um i was actually getting ready to go to um training again in the morning this is like six or seven in the morning and there's only one little shop that uh has food and um, when i went there like like i had this thing called weshley i don't know if you know what that is is what weshley it's like kind of i've never heard of it's like cold, oh, cold oatmeal, but like super sweet, and there's like honey. And anyway, does it, that's uh, not important to the story. I just remember the food. <laughs> um, but I was eating it, and I'm like, God, this is amazing. And then I hear screaming outside, and I'm like, Geez, what's going on there? And um, I look out the, I look out the shop, and there's this woman like, like running, and there's this guy on like this like scooter, like kind of chasing her and kind of like grabbing her. And I'm like, Whoa, buddy, no, not cool, not cool. Like, and I'm like, I'm there, I'm huge, right? Like, uh. Uh, everyone else is like definitely shorter than me. I can like see the oh, top Thai, of my head. Thai people are are short. Like if I'm considered <laughs> tall in Thailand, it's scary. And I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're tall here, so. I mean, <laughs> 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 um, but when I when I went there, it was just like uh, like the guy was just like, oh, who, who the hell is this guy? He's like, no, don't worry about it. Like, like he didn't speak English, but he was like some local. I'm guessing a farmer. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's none of your business. And he's like, don't worry about it. 
And he goes on, and he's like trying to like hit her. He's like, she's like chasing her, and then she's crying and screaming. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, no! And he's like, he's like yelling at her, just like grabbing her, like like yanking her. And I'm like, hey, I don't know how to speak Thai, obviously. I'll go, no grabbing, no grabbing. <laughs> he's like, he just kind of like ignores me. Um, and so my um, what I did was that I kicked the motorcycle stand so that way he couldn't he couldn't ride off again. And then I sunk in a chokehold and I dragged him off the bike. And then I just. <laughs> and, then, and then he was like like trying to scream like <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my god you know, like more about like more time you know like striking but they don't know grappling yeah. so i just like <laughs> and he just like he was like knocked out cold but then well almost cold but there was um a local who saw and i guess like i said i was on fighters road so yeah. like he assumed I was just like some like wacko foreigner trying to like start trouble with locals. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. He's, he's like, um, really abusing his girlfriend or wife there. And I'm just yeah. trying to stop. And I look at him and then he's just like walking forward and he's like 50 or something. He's like walking forward. And I'm like, you don't know English, do you? <laughs> he just, oh, he just like God. punches me in the face, but he's like 50. So I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I, I threw the guy off. And I'm like, no, he hit girlfriend, no good, no good. Oh. I'm just stopping. And I'm like, I'm like doing charades. And luckily some people um, who also saw it like came over and translated for him. And he's like, oh, okay, my bad, sorry about that. But while this is all happening, the guy gets up and uh, I'm like, oh, you want some more? And then he's like, he like runs away. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. But then he runs to his motorcycle and he lifts up the lid and then pulls out this like rusty sickle <gasps> knife. I don't know if you know what it is. Oh a, my a, god! Yes. Yeah, it's like a, a knife that farmers use to. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, the, the um the thing, yeah. Yeah, and like I'm like uh I'm like shit. I don't know if I have my tetanus shot or anything. And I'm like squaring up, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh my god! Like, I don't know. Like, I hope I don't get cut. I'm probably gonna get cut, but it looks like he's like not backing down. Um, now, luckily, um, a bunch of like other fighters who saw like they like form a wall, and they're like, no, nah, don't you even try anything? And like he's like backing up, backing up, and then like the uh, restaurant owner who I was at because I ate there like all the time. Like, she's oh like, my god. god. I'm gonna call the cops right now. Um, and, and he like rides off, and I'm like, okay. And I finish off my food, and then I go to training. Um, but, I love that. I training, oh my god! <laughs> I, I I finished, and I showered, and my hair was flat at the point because um I don't know, like the humidity, just like it, it's yeah. not spiky. So I had a different pose and like my hair was flat and I might have went back like there were cops there and it's like like there are never cops in like uh in that area and I'm like uh oh and they start pulling up and I'm just like uh oh so I, I I just like you know looked far ahead and then I like pretended I didn't see anything <laughs> yeah, I know, so in Thailand I kind of looked high like if I like got like, yeah yeah drunk, yeah definitely yeah, I could totally pull it off you can <laughs> so, pull it off like, I, I was like yeah you could you could you could you, you look like a local you could off the radar. Up. <laughs> oh my god that's so cool like i love like i think that's like such an amazing Thai like story like a story about like thailand and like it's just cool like i mean like using like you said like you're using not just this as like a sport but it could actually save someone's life like which you did that day and that's like a great example of how like this training isn't just like you know it's great for sports great for passion it's great to work out but like it's, it also could save someone's life, whether it's your own or someone else's. So that's like awesome that like you use what you learned and your training to help someone else out there. And like that's so cool. And like, oh, so we're actually forty five minutes in, and you said you couldn't even last till fifteen minutes. So like this is it's like it's like amazing to talk to you. I think we could talk all day about like Muay Thai or sports and things like that. Um, and I agree. I think like. You're, like you said, um, there is a cultural difference where, like, in, in here in the states, if it's like two hours of like hardcore, like we're gonna get it in, we're gonna do, we're gonna go hard, go ham, and then in Thailand, it's definitely like take your time, do things slower, and it's like it's like a lifestyle difference. Like Thai yeah. people tend to be more easygoing. Um, they're like, especially like when you get out of the city, there's like time really isn't a rush, 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 rush thing as we see here in the states, where it's like productivity, do this, do this, do this, do this. But like there, it's like okay, like, let's take our time to do things. Let's, like, really learn the craft. And, like, they have, like, I don't know if you were able to see this during your stay there, but, like, there's a really great deep respect 
for the sport of one time in Thailand as well. Like everything's treated like very like with like high honor and respect. And like trainers are like really held up to a high regard there. So it's like very, very like slow, meticulous, easygoing, but also there's like this high reverence for the sport. And it's like it's like our pride, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's it's like the thing that we own and we're like very proud of it. And, you know, I'm glad that now like people are it's catching on. People are like appreciative of it and things like that. So <laughs> I need to go I want to learn what I I feel like now that my ankle is a little better, I feel like now, you know, I definitely want to like put my get into kicks and stuff. Like I can't kick, but like you know, the only kicks I know are from like karate when I was like It's back in and, there. Like, it's in there. It's in there. Like because I know they got the roundhouse or something, right? But like I don't know. I don't ooh, know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I only know how to do this is my 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 knowledge of combat versus the jab cross, the hooks, and the uppercuts. That's all I know how to do. So it's like and that's American boxing. So um but anyway, so like before we wrap up, is there anything else like, you know, so I give my guests and this is their platform to like promote themselves. Is it their Instagram? It's not the Instagram, something they're passionate about, a topic you want to talk about, or even promote your gym. Uh you said Kenzo Gracie. Uh, is it the, the gym that you go to? Do you want to give them a shout out? Uh, oh yeah, like Hensel Gracie, John Danaher. <laughs> he's like a great Brazilian Jiu Jitsu coach, and uh, Joe St. Fury, who's uh, like probably one of the best um, Muay Thai coaches as well. Um, yeah, like definitely come by when this pandemic is over, uh, and then you know you can like get a taste of it before you go off to Thailand and you know uh, try it out yourself. Um, my Instagram handle: Smexy Simon. That's sexy, but with the M. So, like, write that down. Um, yeah, I'll definitely put it all in the, the description. <laughs> Maxi Simon. That's like been your brand since, like, Polly. So it's, like, literally been her thing. <laughs> and Simon's, like, never changed. I love it. Like, Simon, Simon really is, like, the realest guy out there. Like, I love this kid to death. Like, he is an amazing person. I'm so glad he got to witness me breaking my ankle because, like, <laughs> but he's such a cool guy. I'm so glad about orientation. All right. So, like, um, I'll let you all like definitely please check out Kenzo Gracie and as per Simon's recommendation, they do give free trials. I have been meaning to go, but I keep postponing. So after the pandemic, I got you. We are gonna put the gym together, Simon. All right. Well, thank you Perfect. for joining me. I really appreciate it. See you soon. It was an Bye. honor. Thank you. Thank you so much, May.